The Hula Popper is an all-time classic topwater lure and has rightfully earned its place in the tackle boxes of anglers all over the world. The bait features a concave mouth that creates the iconic popping sound you hear and also a pulsating rubber skirt that flares out nicely in the water. It comes in four different sizes, a one and a quarter inch body, a one and three quarter inch body, a two inch version, and a two and a quarter inch. The two smaller versions are equipped with one rear treble hook and are primarily best for small water fishing, while the two bigger versions have two treble hooks and can be fished almost anywhere. The hula popper was actually first introduced in 1941 as a fly rod popper, and it wasn't until seven short years later in 1948 when the casting model of the hula popper was introduced, which is what we see today. Fred Arbogast, the founder of Arbogast Baits, was a true pioneer when it came to topwater designs. Using his experience as an employee for Goodyear Rubber and Tire Company, he began designing skirts made out of rubber for his fishing lures. These skirts were groundbreaking technology for the fishing industry back then. Arbogast had the skirts patented in 1938, and shortly after, the hula popper made history, being the first ever topwater lure to be fitted with a rubber skirt. You can throw the hula popper in a variety of situations, but for a good starting point, I definitely recommend throwing it on a smaller body of water. The biggest variable to throw in the hula popper is how you pop the bait. And there's so many different ways you can work this bait. Let's start with the time in between pauses. Now you can base a lot of things on how long you pause your hula popper. But some basic rules for you to follow, the dirtier the water you're fishing, the longer you pause that bait. And the colder the water you're fishing, the longer you pause that bait. You can go all the way up to pausing it for five seconds or even waiting until all those rings around the bait disappear. This is for situations when fish might not be roaming around and as active, so it just gives them more time to find that bait. Another thing to keep in mind is the violence of the pop, so how hard you pop it. Now you can bring that hula popper all the way under the water and sort of chug it. This is going to mimic a bait fish that's fleeing at the top of the water. Or you could go vice versa and just go with a short, subtle pop almost like a bait fish that's feeding at the top. Both are really good ways to entice competitive fish to come up and strike that bait. And the longer you pause that bait, the more that rubber skirt's gonna flare out and dance around them to the water.